The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, Realist Puppet in the game. Today, we are creating a vocals mix template using Logic Pro X. That's right. Logic Pro X. Let me give you a second for that to sink in. All right, let's get to it. So I have a song here with absolutely no plugins, super raw, super dry. So we're going to take this and we're going to beef it up using just plugins that come with Logic Pro X. So the first thing that we're going to do is hit the letter X to open up our mixer and we're going to load up seven sends onto our vocal channels. Now our vocal channels are these three. I'm actually not going to put any effects on this reverb head that I made. If you want to know how to make this reverse reverb thing you heard in the beginning, I have a whole separate tutorial on that. Uh, we're really putting effects on these channels, which would be these. So while they're all highlighted, you just go to bus one and then option click, bus two, option click all the way up till you got seven boom so we got seven. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by muting these until we need them or else we're just gonna hear the same thing a whole bunch of times and uh, the first thing that we're going to do is put some effects on the actual channels now I'm gonna be using a compressor that comes with logic it is uh, this guy right here. Now I really, really like this compressor because it is seven compressors in one. You really get to pick your favorite flavor of compression. The default one, Platinum Digital, that they give you is actually gonna be the one that we're gonna use for this. I'm not really a fan of the auto release or the auto gain. So we're gonna start out by turning that off. Now for our compression that is on the channel, we're not gonna wanna really be pushing it too far past five. This is really gonna be a light, even everything out compression. This isn't gonna be the smash it up in your face compressor. So we're gonna start by just slowing down the attack a little bit, speeding up the uh, release a little bit and seeing what we get. A little bit more makeup gain. Since we're bringing it down about five decibels, you want to bring it up about five. You can kind of see as you pump up the ratio, you get a more consistent volume. Uh, we only really want about half of this, so I'm just going to end up leaving it at like four to one, maybe even less, three to one. I'm also really a fan of this uh, soft distortion. Just a nice color to add. And we're going to copy this and copy this again. Again, we're holding Option. And let's move down to our next plugin. Actually, let's make a space. Because before we do our compressor, I want to actually tune this a little bit more. We're going to go to Pitch pitch correction and I know this song is in F minor so you select natural minor F and this is the same as auto-tune but free with logic and logic is really tight because it gives you this no other software gives you this and this is so crucial for vocal production so if you're a logic user you can save a whole lot of money and just not even buy auto-tune i'm not going to do full full blast t-pain mode on this vocal i'm probably just going to do a little modest tuning to it because it's already pretty in tune it doesn't need too much more and we're also going to copy this onto our other vocals and by the way our other vocals are a simple double whoops and also a pitch down double i pitched that down using little alter boy and then froze it uh the next thing 
we are going to add to this vocal now that everything is in tune and we have our compressor is a little bit of EQ and we're going to put our EQ before our compressor as well. So let's load up the channel EQ. I'm going to roll this off at, uh, let's see, maybe like 70 or 80. Let's give it a listen. And make clear, the time has come. Pre-packed and ready for the trip to Zion. Have no fear. When I roll off bass, I'm not actually really listening to the bass of the vocal. I'm really paying attention to the high end where all the emotion and all the character and all the lyrics are um, because that's what I'm trying to bring out. And a lot of times you'd think, okay, well, I'm supposed to pay attention to the low end when I'm doing this, but really I pay attention to the high end when I'm cutting out my load because uh, this is really a way to create space for your highs rather than boost your highs. And we're going to create even more space for our highs with a little shelf right here too. So let me pull this shelf down and we're going to put this shelf up to like 500 or so. This is really how we balance how much lows and how much highs are in our recording. Now adding a little bit of uh, low shelf is almost like the same thing as adding a little bit of high shelf, uh, but it's more of a subtractive uh, way to increase the clarity of your vocal rather than just putting a shelf here. I find high shelves to be a little bit harsh on vocals, so I'm always trying to cut out lows instead of add highs. So let's bring this EQ over to our background vocal, and on this low one, I don't want to low cut it so much. I actually want some of that rumble because it's pitched down on this channel. And I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to make it a little bit more tame on our pitch down low one. The time has come. Next thing I want to do is some more effects on my background vocals directly on the channel. And then we're going to get into some parallel processing. The only uh, layer that I really want to make sound processed is this pitch down one. Uh, I feel like the pitch down effect isn't quite enough of an effect. I want a little bit more effects, so I'm going to load up my favorite effect, and that's a flanger. Right off the bat, sounds way cooler, and we're going to add some grit to this, and my favorite grit is bit grit, and by that I mean a bit crusher kind of distorts it without uh, putting like overdrive on it. Kind of just finding the perfect amount where it doesn't feel digital and harsh and it just feels like a nice, crispy, low ad lib. Cool, we're gonna leave that right there. Now, time to get to the fun part we are going to start doing some parallel processing. And the first thing we're going to do is parallel compression for our lead vocal. And that's going to pull up the compressor. And instead of using the Platinum Digital, we're going to go over to the uh, Studio FET compressor. And we're going to smash this thing. Let's also turn this junk off again. And let's unmute our channel. <laughs> let's also give this the name Compression 1. We're going to do one compressor for the leads and one compressor for the backgrounds and lows. So we're actually not even going to send these two to bus 1 because these are going to get sent to bus 2. And this one's not going to get sent to bus 2. Tomorrow we will be gone. Hear me clear. You kind of get to pick how much of the beginning and the ends of the words you want by picking the attack and release. So if you think the beginnings of the words are getting muffled, do a slower attack. Or if you think you have too much of the beginning of the word, faster attack. And likewise, at the end of the word, if your breaths or your exhales or the S's or whatever is at the end of the word is really jumping out a little bit too much, then that means that your release is too fast. If it's all the way here, you're going to be hearing the ends of the words too much. So I'm going to rock it somewhere in the middle. Whoops. 
tomorrow we will be gone Hear me clear, the time has come Pre-packed and ready for the trip to And we're going to copy this guy over to here Turn this one on, pull it down to a little bit less Because these are our background vocals now Coming in into your Comp 2 channel Don't know, don't know Tomorrow we will be gone Hear me clear, the time has come Pre-packed and ready for the trip to Zion Cool, so that is our compression setup for this vocal mix template Do your 808 sound like floppy trash? Are you constantly struggling to fix weak snares that just never cut it? Here at Whole Loops, we can solve your struggle. Introducing Urban Beats Volume 2, the sequel to our blazing hip hop and R&B drum kit. This time, we've doubled the sauce and created the perfect selection of special snares, pop and percussions, and 808s so disrespectful, you'll be getting noise complaints in 60 minutes or less guaranteed. Urban Beats 2 is available only at wholeloops.com. The first effect we are going to create is going to be an eighth note delay. So we can call this one slash eight, unmute it, and let's add a, let's add a tape delay. And inside this tape delay, I'm gonna be setting up a normal quarter note delay. I think quarter note delays sound really good on reggae vocals. No, no. I'm going to hit a little, little feedback, a little spread, a little high cut, a little low cut. We're actually going to be using just about everything in this. Don't know, don't know, tomorrow we will be gone. Now these feel a little bit early to me. Everything in the beat is a little bit late in the pocket for a stylistic reason. We just need our delays to match that. So we're gonna pull up our sample delay and this is what I love to use to get my delays in the pocket. And we're just gonna delay the audio going into the delay by a hundred and you know whatever. Don't know, don't know. Tomorrow we will be gone. Hear me clear, the time is gone. And then turn our delays down a little bit so they don't compete so much with our dry vocal. Now the third thing we need to do to these delays is separate them from the lead uh, with not just timing but with a little bit of pitch and detuning. And to do that we're going to use our ensemble plugin and this is like a uh, sort of like a chorus plugin. There's a preset that I really really like called Bump the voices all the way up in this stereo spread nice and high. So you could hear our delays are now back in the mix, not forward, and they're just supporting the lead so nicely, and uh, that's what delays are for. And we're gonna move on to a nice long delay now. We're gonna copy this sample delay over because we're gonna use it again. And let's pull up a tape delay for our long one. And we're gonna do a half note. Let's unmute this channel so we can hear it. And we're gonna call this one slash two. Pull it down because I know it's just gonna be too long. Cool. So now that we've got our 
half note delays going, we're again going to add one more effect to them to help them not jump out so much. And that is going to be a little bit of reverb. And for this reverb, we're going to be using the new Chroma reverb inside of Logic. And right off the bat, that's helping our half note delays sound way better. Don't know, don't know. Tomorrow we will be gone. Maybe just bring up the dry a little bit too. Bring the wet down. Don't know, don't know. Tomorrow we will be gone. Hear me clear. The time has come. Pre-packed and ready for the trip to Zion. Don't cool. Just blend those in a little better. Already, just by putting reverb on the half note delays, it sounds like we have a lush verbed out vocal, and we don't even really have any vocal reverbs set up yet, but that's next. So the first reverb that we're gonna do is Logic's Silver Verb. Silver Verb has this awesome preset called Metal Stairwell, and this is a very lush, long reverb. Let's unmute this channel so we can hear it. You need so little of it. And it just fills in that space so nicely. Let's call this long verb. And let's also do a uh, short verb next. And for our short verb, we're going to pull up the space designer. And we're going to do a preset here in small spaces called Prince Hall 2. Sounding really good, sounding really lush. The only effect that I want to add now is a slap delay. And to do a slap delay, we're actually just going to pull up this same sample delay that we had from here and maybe just do a little bit more extreme on the delay. And I love adding some distortion to my slap delays. It's a great way to add distortion to your vocal without actually adding distortion to your vocal. So I am going to pull up the little clip distortion. Yeah. I actually pull up the preset called Bright Distortion. Yeah, the time was come. Pre-packed and ready for the trip to Zion. And then turn that way down in the mix. Yeah, the time was come. Pre-packed and ready for the trip to Zion. Loses a lot of power when you take the distortion and the slap out. Yeah, the time was come. Pre-packed and ready for the trip to Zion. Have no fear. Really, if you take any one of these effects out, you lose a whole lot of power. And the beauty of these is as you're adding them, it seems subtle, but in retrospect, when you go back and you mute stuff, you realize how much it is in fact doing. Now in this vocal, we only have one double, and I don't really wanna put that double in one ear or the other, cause it's gonna sound a little bit unbalanced, but we don't have a second one to you know put in the left ear if we were to put this one in the right ear. So we're gonna do an old automation trick and switch this into touch, and every single sentence is gonna come in a different ear, and we're just gonna rock this panning control as it plays to send each sentence into a different ear and it kind of just helps the idea move around the song a little bit if that makes sense let's do this i just switched to the touch you hit the space bar so now we have something that's a little bit more active moving around and definitely a lot more balanced Tomorrow we will be gone. 
Now you really don't even hear it switching sides, which is the awesome part about it. It kind of just makes it seem like the vocal is like dancing around you and going places. And that's exactly what vocal production is about because without all these effects, it just sounds like it goes nowhere. This vocal is really just a hook. This is for an EDM track. So there's not really like verses and bridges and all these separate things to do different styles to. But if this was a full song, I would probably start out a little bit dry and then as the song progresses bring in different effects and to do that that's really just a matter of automating these volume knobs down here the same way you just put it into touch mode and kind of rock it out by hand because when you do it by hand you end up with a much uh, more unique kind of automation than you would if you were just to click in some lines so there you have it this is my logic vocals template the only other thing i would add is probably the uh, adaptive limiter here at the end just to keep it from clipping yeah, and then the time has come now that we got all of our effects in place, we can turn our beat back up a little bit and start to blend in our vocals with our song. So there you have it, my Logic Pro X vocals mixing template. I hope you found this useful. If you'd like to see me mix some vocals using Waves plugins, my previous vocals video was using nothing but Waves plugins, even though that's in Ableton. These same parallel processing techniques translate, except for uh, you have to set up these auxes here in Logic. In Ableton, there's a, an easy parallel within the channel kind of solution that I went over a whole bunch of times in my other video. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you learned something. I hope your vocals sound better from here on out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be coming back with some more Logic tutorials because I know a lot of people who watch this channel also use Logic. I was using Logic for freaking years before I was using Ableton. There's some things in Logic I really miss, but again, that's not what this video is about. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time with another tutorial. Peace out.